Hey there, I'm Miska and welcome to Hitscan. Today we're going to be doing the introduction to movement in Valorant. This video will not help you bunny hop across the map, it will not help you flick to people's heads quicker in your unrated warm-up games, nor will it magically help you reach the next rank you're trying to chase. We'll be covering good movement in this video and how good movement can enable good aim, thus making you a better player. Let's begin with the basics. First off, the essential. No matter if you're running, walking or crouching, your character will move faster with their knife out. This is why people switch to their knife when they have to run across the map. Enemies cannot hear you swap weapons, so you can do this when you are right around the corner of an enemy, just don't get caught with your knife out. You need to have your gun out and ready to shoot. And speaking of shooting, weapons in Valorant have different base accuracy. At longer ranges, weapons don't just lose out on damage, but also accuracy. This is common in any FPS game, and especially tack shooters such as Valorant. In a game where first bullet accuracy is incredibly important, you need to know how this works. This is often referred to as range inaccuracy, and is part of the weapon's firing error. We also have spray control. When you shoot in Valorant, there is a set base spray pattern that the bullets from your weapon will follow, specific to each gun. This is what that pattern looks like for the Vandal, the Phantom, and the Spectre, for just a few quick examples. This is similar to games like Counter-Strike, with the difference being that Valorant also adds more randomness to your spray pattern the longer you hold down the mouse button. The time it takes to recover from this and start to spray from the beginning again is referred to as the recovery time. All this is included in the weapon's firing error. When firing, we also have to deal with movement inaccuracy. In Valorant, you will not be accurate when you are fully running. That's when you're using the WASD keys to move. This will result in uncontrollable bullet spread, which is also known as movement error. When you are walking, that means holding down shift when using WASD, your footsteps are quiet, you move slower and you are more accurate than when running. But you are still inaccurate as you can see here. To be fully accurate, you have to be standing still when you take the shot. Valorant also features abilities that will sometimes affect these factors, including Jet's ultimate Bladestorm that allows for perfect accuracy when jumping, floating, walking or just full on running. The way to work against movement and firing error is by picking a weapon for the correct range, working against that weapon's spray pattern, if it's a fully automatic one, and then using something referred to as counter strafing. That's what we'll be focusing on in this video. When you are strafing in Valorant, that's running or walking using the A and D button on your keyboard, you will have to either stop fully to shoot or counter out the movement in the opposite direction using the opposite key. If you're holding down A to walk left, you'll have to press D to stop faster. But you can also counter strafe and change direction instantly without really stopping at all. This allows you to take your shot quicker and be in more control of your movement. This is what we call counter strafing. Counter strafing can be used to quickly take a shot on the go, but also to quickly peek a corner and get an accurate shot of whilst barely stopping at all. See this clip where I peek down the middle of split, spot a sage walking into my sight line, just barely there, and then with that crosser placement, pre-aim, quickly re-peek the angle and counter strafe back, timing my shot in the middle when I briefly stop for an accurate headshot. A quick and pretty easy kill to be honest, this is what counter strafing allows you to do and it's probably the reason you've been raging in game when people kill you just after you spot them full on running. And whilst obviously there's potential desync and ping issues and things like that that you're always going to be dealing with in a video game, these fundamentals build everything around this tack shooter. The shot I took there wasn't actually very skillful in terms of aim, but rather in terms of pre-planning, pre-aiming and just a little bit of counter strafing. An easy way to practice counter strafing so you can learn the timing of when to shoot is to jump into the practice range and get a nice plain wall in front of you. Strafing left and right in the same spot, you can try to time your shots with when you swap direction to figure out when you are accurate and when you can land that headshot. This is the easiest way to train or warm up your muscle memory for when you play. Applying this in-game is obviously the real challenge though, but this is a good start to get a better idea of when you are fully accurate. Whether or not you play with a crosser that displays movement and firing error, that can be turned on in this part of the crosser setting screen, getting this timing down 
is key to having good movement in Valorant. If you want a consistent warm-up challenge for yourself, you can put yourself in front of this pillar in the practice range and do the same counter-strafing exercise on the left and right of the pillar, trying to land as many shots as possible in the exact same spots on the right and left, creating these dark black dots if you're doing it right, and this will help you warm up before you play. Shout out to FPS coach Ron Rambo Kim for that tip. As you can see, doing this with a firing and movement error crosshair can be useful to understand how these inaccuracies work, but I would really recommend keeping a static crosshair as well, as you will not really fully be able to rely on that visual indicator, you have to work this into your muscle memory. Moving on, let's talk about peaking. One of the main things Counter-Strike players notice when picking up Valorant is the difference in movement speed. Valorant doesn't allow you to shoulder or jiggle peak corners the same way you can do in Counter-Strike. This means that you are often more committed to peaking a corner in Valorant when you begin moving out into a sightline. This is really in Valorant where the abilities come into play of forcing defending enemies away from holding an angle using a breach flash or blocking their sightline with a brimstone smoke. You can also outsmart attackers by standing in a different spot or at a different angle, using characters such as Raze to jump on top of some boxes or Sage to boost yourself up and peek out on top of a wall. This is really where the creativity of Valorant comes into play and why utilizing abilities to gain an advantage is so crucial to consider consistently good play. To bring this back to movement though, the ability usage doesn't shut down creative movement play fully either. In certain spots on narrow angles and common sightlines on maps, you can still bait out abilities or sniper shots without dying, especially in low to mid levels of play. This can be difficult and risky to do as well, but if you show just a sliver of yourself in a sightline and get an operator to fire off a shot your way, you've gained some important information that you can use to your advantage. Again, shoulder peeking a corner like this and definitely jiggle peeking are not really as much of a thing in Valorant as they are in Counter-Strike, but it can still be useful. The more you play, the more comfortable you will be just moving around. And that will help you know how you peek a corner properly without walking out too far or not peeking enough to see something yourself but just showing yourself to the enemy. This can really take time, but you can still jump into the practice range or any map. You can practice this with a friend on the other side as well, just strafing out around a corner, practicing your counter strafing to stop and shoot, but also to just apply the right amount of movement. It sounds silly to be practicing something so basic like this, but really when you're learning the fundamentals, it's so important to consider these things as they are the difference between getting a kill or getting killed. All right, next let's talk crouching. This is a tricky one and opinions will differ here, so please don't bombard me in the comments too much, but these are my two cents. When you crouch in Valorant, certain weapons will have a decreased amount of horizontal or vertical recoil. Whilst this can be useful, crouching in Valorant is slow and not as effective as in other games. And for the horizontal or vertical recoil to matter, you have to be shooting for a while anyway, at least to really notice it. This generally means that crouching in Valorant is not that beneficial for accuracy. So when should you crouch, if at all? Well, I got some good news. It's mostly up to you. In higher levels of play, people start aiming at head height a lot. Crosshairs will sometimes even be placed too high, and this is when you can get away with a cheeky crouch to duck under being headshot when peeking or holding an angle. Generally though, at low to mid levels of play, and most definitely the average Valorant player, are not aiming at head height as much, and a lot of the time, not nearly as much as they think they are. If someone is aiming for your chest and you hit crouch, then, well, guess what happens? You put your head in the middle of their crosshair. Oh no -y. There's no full-on right or wrong answer here, and some people have a habit of crouching that comes more from other games. I'm definitely part of that group. This is where you have to kind of develop your own playstyle a little bit, decide when do you want to crouch during a peak, if a certain angle is more beneficial for you to be standing in when holding rather than crouching in, or maybe if you just don't like crouching when shooting at all because it could throw off your own crosser placement. All in all, this is something worth considering, but there's no inherent right or wrong here that always applies. You can throw a crouch in when re-peaking an angle. There's certain spots where you'll be a bit lower down than usual because of a height difference and exaggerating this further by also crouching can be useful. But crouching just for the sake of accuracy to try and hit a shot is not really as much of a thing in this game. Next up, let's cover jumping and crouch jumping. Jumping in Valorant compared to some other attack shooters is actually pretty different. You have quite a bit more air control 
when you are jumping in Valorant. This means if you're falling from a height or jumping out a window, such as on A site on a Haven, you can steer yourself to the side quite easily. You don't have to do some crazy tricky jump to pull that sort of thing off. There's not really a whole lot of spots or parts of different maps where knowing how to jump in a certain way is that beneficial. So most spots in Valorant have something you can step up on, that you can jump up on first, then jump up to the next height. There's not even a lot of spots that have these differences in elevation, to be honest, but when you run into them, if you can't just make the jump normally, or just want to make sure you can make the jump, you can crouch jump by pressing your jump button and then holding your crouch button midair. This is really not a complicated concept, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. As of right now, the only times where I find myself using that a decent amount is if there's a sage wall to try and jump up on that's a little bit difficult to get to because of a height difference that's not built into the map. Generally though, maps in Valorant are designed to not have these crazy angles and irregular differences in height. If you want to practice jumping and such, go to the parkour course in the practice range. Right around the corner of this building, there is a jumping puzzle, a parkour course, kind of like a KZ Zara if you're from Counter-Strike. All in all, you can do a bunch of different jumping here and practice your air movement. I don't think this is actually as important in Valorant as it can be in Counter-Strike, but it's still something fun to do and see if you can make it all the way to the end. Also obviously included when we talk about jumping, you have to think about strafe jumping, air strafing and bunny hopping and all that sort of stuff. These things are all doable in Valorant, but are only really useful in specific cases. Strafe jumping can be useful when falling back, for example, but in Valorant, you have more air control than in some other shooters, definitely when compared to CS. This means that generally, tricks like these are a little bit less important to focus on, but both bunny hopping and strafe jumps are still a thing. To be honest, this stuff is too complicated for this video, and I don't wanna delve into it too much, but we can talk about that in a video at a later time. If you're watching this video though, you're probably trying to learn how to peek and move and shoot accurately, what counter strafing and movement error is like in this game. And bunny hopping is just not something that's worth learning for that crowd. Not right now at least. You definitely don't have to know how to bunny hop to be good at Valorant. Movement in Valorant is one of the most complex things to learn. It can take a long time to really get good at it, as the skill ceiling is high and combined with shooting, it allows you to really pour thousands of hours into learning a game like this. I want this video to sort of serve as an intro to all of that and an intro to learning all of that and we'll get more specific in future videos for those of you that have already learned the basics of this, those of you with Counter-Strike experience that want to get into more details. But if you're learning Valorant then these fundamentals are really important to understand as everything in this game is built around this. All the weapons, abilities and especially maps consider all of these things when in the design stage. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.